Hey guys, welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm Mark I'm here with Steve once again talking about new features in Final Cut Pro 10.2. Uh, and you're going over some of the color correction things. I mean, not all the masks and everything, but something about the processing order. Yeah, well, I want to correct some things about the color correction effect. If I'm kind of <laughs> you want to correct the color corrector. <laughs> right, I want to change the trajectory of people's thinking. Ah, okay. I, I know that sounds kind of highfalutin, but here's the thing is a lot of people were complaining that, what do you mean I got to, I have to drag a color correction a filter onto a, onto a clip every time I want to use it? Because color correction used to be automatically in the specter, but now it's become an effect in the effects browser, and it seems like you have to drag it onto a clip in order to apply it. Right. Like why, why would you make it a harder thing to do? Well, that's why I want to do this episode, to really show what the benefits are of having a separate effect, yeah. as a, a separate color correction effect. And by the way, it's not harder to do. There's a way to apply it even faster than you used right. to. Right. So in fact, we'll get to that for, uh, okay. soon enough. But, but here's... Thing. here's I got this clip of uh, my, my friend Rachel, and I'm going to go ahead and open the effects browser. I'm going to go to the color category. And what I want to do is point out that I'd really like to make her, give it her a sepia, give kind of a sepia wash effect. Mm -hmm. And notice that these looks are still kind of in there from previous versions. And I, I'm sorry, but that is the worst looking sepia <laughs> effect I have ever seen. <laughs> it's just. It doesn't look that good. No, it, uh, no I, maybe I'm being. Hyperbolic, <laughs> hyperbolic here, but I could do better. And I'm going to show you how using you're this. Make, you're going to make your own. Yeah, I'm, I'm going right. to roll my own here. Okay. okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to add a color correction effect. Now, like you said, I could drag that on there, but you said you mentioned there's a faster effect way you don't have to do that. All you need to do is open the color board. Command, so you press Command, command six, 6, right? which is the same Command 6 from earlier versions of Final Cut Pro 10. That's so right. Nothing changed nothing there. Nothing changed. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to go into the exposure pane, and I just, all I want to do, I, I don't like to do things blind, and I'm going to just press Command 7. I think the scopes are a really good idea to have open yes. when you're color grading. I don't know why people don't use them, but you should be using them. Okay, <laughs> so I have the scopes open, and what I want to do is just kind of crush the shadows just a little bit. Notice, get them right in there on the black, on the... Uh, the zero line there, maybe maybe even the midtones, just 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 just, just a little bit, okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing some a base grade here. Just, but you're you're go ahead. I would just dynamic range. You're adjusting contrast. Yes, I'm adjusting mm -hmm. contrast. I'm just trying to stretch the contrast. Now, okay. if I jump back into the main inspector pane, your point is just made that I didn't apply the, the color correction effect. It was applied once I made a change in the color board. Okay. So there you go. Now what I want to do is. I don't like all this detail. I want to try to create something that, that uh, can blows out the background. So your so, eye isn't drawn yeah, to Yeah, I don't want yeah. to see all that. I just mm -hmm. want to just her. I'm, I'm, remember, I'm doing a stylized look for her. I don't care about realistic yes. you know, rendering of the colors in the background. I care less. So I'm going to grab this white, black, and white effect, drop it on there. And I just love this filter because if you click this little down-facing arrow, you can move your mouse pointer and you can remap the, the tonal range to, to a specific color. And it has a definite effect on what your black and white looks like depending on where your mouse pointer is. I tend yeah. to want it all the way over here toward white because then I get that nice blown out background. Yes, yes. So I'm very, very happy with so that. So that's blown out, but you still have good uh, tonal range still on great. her skin. Absolutely. So I've got, yeah. I've got color correction now. I have a black and white applied on top of that, but we have a problem. Oh, we have a problem. Yes. Houston. Yeah, we, we do. Like, here you, oh, if, if your this whites goes to, are just... Yeah, if, if this goes to broadcast, it's going to reject it, and I'll yeah. never work in this town again. Okay, so <laughs> this is... We have to deal with this. Yes. So what I'm going to do is go on what I call the sledgehammer. <laughs> it's the broadcast <laughs> save filter. filter. Boom, boom. boom. This, this Every, pushes everything yeah. that's illegal makes it legal. Right. right. I call it the sledgehammer because it's, it's unforgiving. If you have a bunch of, like, um, I don't know, subtleties in your white areas, it's just, like... Yeah, you know, so you can see not, that harsh. Yeah, you can line see very. It's like someone just went. Yep. Your yep. white, but that's not, be that as it may. I, I don't really care about that because I'm going for a look. I don't. Yes. I don't care about detail in the white. Yes. So you're fine. Big, I'm fine. You're fine. Yeah. Now, processing order. So you can see here, I have color correction, and then black and white on top of that, and then a broadcast safe on top. So of that. it's applying it from the top down. Top down. Okay. Now here's where why. Having color correction as a separate effect is critical because now that I have all this set up, I want to apply another color correction effect on top of that to apply a nice sepia wash over the whole thing. Got it. Okay. And that was something you couldn't do before. You know, have two separate color corrections, like having other effects sandwiched between oh, two. Oh, so there's there's effects between the color corrections. That's right. All right. So let's see how you so, do that. So what I'm going to do is grab this color correction filter. And, and this time you are going to drag it on because you want a second one. I want a second one, although I could have done it from the color board. But, yes. So I'm going to go 
into here, go back into the color board, and I'm going to the color pane. Can you just show people where you could add a second correction yes, up at the top? Absolutely. Right there. That's you can, where you, you could can add, add it. If you're right already there. in the color board, you can you add do a it second. There. Yeah. yeah. So I either just, way. Either way. So here's the thing. I want to I want to grab the mid slider, and I'm going to just push the mids over here to this orange area. I'm just kind of push the mids a little bit into that orangish area. And which you're on the color uh, section the, of the color board. Okay. Exactly. Great. Okay. So. To me, it's all about subtly. I notice this the sepia color is nice. only affecting the mids. Bit, yeah. And uh, maybe you want to do that a little bit in the shadows too. A little add a little sepia to the shadows. I could care less the about whites the whites because I white. want the whites to be white. Yeah, I don't want nice. them. To, this is something it's that a much nicer it's, look. It looks great. Yeah. So when I go back to the main inspector, you could see the processing order. I had that first color correction when I mm -hmm. adjusted the contrast. Then I added a black and white to blow out the background. Then I added a broadcast safe to make it legal. And then on top of that, I added this nice sepia wash in the in the midtones nice. in the in the shadows. Yes. And this is something again you couldn't do in the previous version. Um, the color correction was a, always applied. So this number you're, you're one. Drag, by uh, the way, you're changing order just by dragging. I'm so changing order. You can order. change the stacking order. You can. So or the processing pipeline the of process. these effects. That's why this episode's called the processing the pipeline. pipeline. Uh -huh. So here now I have both of these color questions applied after the black and white. Okay. But that's not what I want because I really wanted that initial grade of this when I stretched yeah. the con and contrast. There's, just, there's a slight difference it's between those and how this looks. It looks better when it's earlier. It does. And mm -hmm. this is why in Final Cut previous to 10 2, this was these you can apply as many corrections as you want, but it was always after whatever effects you couldn't are applied. Split them up. Couldn't yeah. split them up. So this to me, this is huge. Yeah. And I just want again I wanted to emphasize why this is important. It's not that Apple wanted to give you more mouse clips. That's not the point. The point is to give you more control over your images. Excellent. So you don't need more mouse clicks or drags because you can just hit Command-6. And in fact, once you're in the color board and you go to the next clip, yeah. the color board's there. You don't even hit Command-6 again. You start making a change to color board, apply it automatically. Yeah. And then uh, because of the stacking order, you can put broadcast safe last. Yeah. And you can do Make your sandwich. You can make the sandwich. Yeah, and then, it's making me hungry. And then, you can, and then lastly, if you wanted to, you can save this whole stack as an effects free. See, so so that's what I'd want to do. I, I, Absolutely. You, you took uh, all this work to make right. this really nice look. You could save this Rachel, as an effect preset. Rachel Sepia. You know? And it, it includes the color corrections as well as the effects and, all bundled together. Yeah, and it, it look, look, at, look at the list. It includes them in the way, in the processing order yes. they were applied. Nice. nice. So now you can have that to apply to any other clip and in, as a starting point. Exactly. Beautiful. So I'm gonna I click, love it. Yep, I love it. It's just fantastic. Okay. I'm gonna save that. So, Steve, great tip. Really nice new features in 10.2. If you have not upgraded to 10.2 yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. <laughs> oh, you might be waiting for it. It only works a on new Yosemite. Well, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, it only works on Yosemite. <laughs> yeah. So, you do need Yosemite for it, but it opens up a lot of new features you're gonna wanna check out. And if you've been on earlier versions of 10.1 or, or even earlier, if you haven't got to 10.1, you, you got a big jump to go to get to 10.1. You got some new things to learn about libraries, but RippleTraining.com, Steve has a tutorial based on all the new features in 10.2 and the color correction, the 3D titles, and the masking, and it's, it's fabulous. So check that out, RippleTraining.com. Thank you for your support. Thank you for watching MacBreak Studio, and we will see you next week.